Welcome to Big Obsidian Flow at Newberry Volcano, part of the Newberry Volcanic National Monument here in Central Oregon. Uh, looking down on this massive uh, lava flow that produced, among other things, obsidian. Um, kind of looking off towards the sun there, we can see sort of the lobe of the flow down here up against the forest. Uh, thanks for joining me today, geology professor Sean Wilsey, out here exploring some of the volcanic highlights and wonders in this part of Oregon. Um, and I think obsidian is the thing most people get excited about. Um, maybe one of the more beloved rocks that are out there. A nice patch of it right here. Black, shiny, glassy. Let me get out of the sun here a little bit. Of course, it was uh, prized and uh, revered by native people who used it for tool making. Um, the ability for it to be shaped and napped and used as tools and weapons uh, was a huge was a huge uh, advantage. So it was a much sought after uh, rock type. Um, and so this, this flow here is from 1,300 years ago. It's the most recent eruption here in Newberry. Um, and I've, as I've shown with other videos, there's an intimate relationship between obsidian and pumice. And so this is not just all one big obsidian lava flow. And even though this thing looks pretty jumbled, um, just a hodgepodge mixture of rock types in here. Uh, there's actually some structure and order here. And it, it's a little tricky to tell because all the rocks are somewhat disaggregated and, and broken up, but there actually is an ordered um, stratigraphy layering that takes place in these silica rich lava flows. So this thing erupted as um, silica rich magma over 70% silica uh, made its way to the surface. And that type of magma tends to be sticky and pasty. Uh, it traps a lot of gases in it. And so it can sometimes, usually has at least partially an explosive phase. So this actually began as the most gas rich portion of the magma erupted first and produced a lot of ash, blew up chunks of pumice into the air. And then later after much of the gas was uh, removed from the magma, then it oozed out as this thick pasty flow. But let me show you a diagram I put together that shows sort of a typical cross-sectional view of what one of these silica-rich lava flows might look like. Um, and, you know, to see the true, st st true stratigraphy, we typically need um, either drill cores or just really good exposures. So, um, these often begin with an initial phase of eruption that involves tephra. So basically, this would be the stuff that's blown up into the sky, little particles of ash and pumice. So this would be the explosive phase of the eruption initially. So that will blanket the landscape in a layer of ash and pumice, what we, again, what we call tephra. And then as the actual flow oozes out of the ground, so that's the rest of this package here, what we'll typically see along the bottom of that, that lava flow is it will tend to be quite a bit torn up and broken along the bottom where it's moving. So you'll get a layer of breccia at the bottom. And then there's a layer that's cooling quickly, um, quick enough to form obsidian. So remember that one reason that we get obsidian is well, twofold. One is that it's cooler, even though it's, it's lava and the world of lava is it's relatively cool. But the other thing is it has so much silica, it's so viscous, it's so sticky and thick and pasty that it is difficult for the elements, the ions in the lava to actually move. It's just so, it's such a sluggish material. And so they have difficulty um, finding other elements to bond with to form crystals. And so that's why we get this glassy uh, layer in here. So we've got our breccia layer at the bottom, a glassy layer of obsidian. And then in the central part of the, the lava flow, where the cooling is a little bit slower, uh, the elements can move around a little bit and form crystals. And so we get a true rhyolite there. So the very interior of this silica-rich lava 
flow is going to form a, a centralized core of of true rhyolite uh, and then there's a zone uh, again of obsidian up here so it's more glassy it's cooling quicker then there's a zone where there's pumice but the pumice tends to be coarser meaning that the the size of the bubbles in the pumice are larger so it's sometimes called a, a coarsely uh, pum pumaceous layer and then another layer of obsidian above and then the very top you can read my, my writing there is more fine it's more fine pumice so it's pumice that is has a uh, smaller gas bubble so when I'm referring to fine versus coarse it's not the size of the pumice it's actually the size of the vesicles or the gas bubbles there and this top portion is going to be the portion that's going to get folded and, and, and it's going to get um, it's going to have a very irregular surface it's going to get kind of warped and show all sorts of interesting flow structures and shapes there so let's see if we can just find a few different types in here just in this little zone we're in here of course i've shown you the the obsidian that's the easy part to look at and we're not in a good zone here to see uh, all the different layers but even just in this little zone here of broken blocks uh, we can probably pick out a few different types of this sort of thing. So if we come over to this zone of pumice, um, you can see that the holes are quite a bit bigger. In fact, if we kind of look at them from end on, we can see the size of the holes here. So this would be some of that coarsely uh, vesicular pumice where the holes are a little bit bigger than we might see otherwise. Um, if we look around a little bit more, see if we can find some other types as well. So some of this in here looks like it's more of the finely cor cor crystalline pumice. So it's still lightweight in my hand, but it's probably hard for you to see, and even me, the size of the holes in there. They're much smaller than the more visible macroscopic uh, little bubbles we saw earlier in that other chunk. Um, another little zone of obsidian further up here. So mainly we're seeing mostly the pumice and the obsidian. Um, you know, we're several, maybe a couple hundred feet above the bottom of the flow. So I doubt we can actually see into the the crystalline rhyolite core in here. Let's see what else we can check out. Uh, some of the layering we sometimes see in the obsidian is instructive because this is called flow foliation or flow banding. And so the orientation of these layers in the obsidian or the rhyolite or this pumice can sometimes show us exactly how uh, it was being deformed, um, how it was actually being folded on top of itself. Again, a good analogy for this material is thinking about uh, a tube of toothpaste, maybe even something stickier than that, almost like honey, um, just sort of flowing over itself, warping, uh, being deformed, that sort of thing. And though actually this is, you know, even though this is called the, the big obsidian flow and there's plenty of obsidian here, uh, the obsidian is actually a minor component overall compared to the other rock types that it contains. So you can see it kind of gets a little bit darker here. Uh, this would be the more coarsely vesicular pumice. So the, the fine, fine pumice tends to be lighter gray and the pumice with the larger gas bubbles tends to be much darker. The dark color in the obsidian um, comes from little bits of iron. So it's small bits of iron actually impart the color to the obsidian. Here's some of the nice flow banding or flow foliation through this little section here. Um, mostly this is the coarse pumice through this little zone. So it looks a little chaotic, but there is some structure 
and organization to it uh, when you look at it in detail and when you have good exposure or subsurface data. And these the two can kind of mingle. Here's a little section where we've got um, a little zone of glassy obsidian. This actually nice little spot where it shows its own little internal structure. We've got finely uh, fine pumice here with small bubbles surrounding this core of obsidian and then wrapping around that it looks like it's a bit of a fold here is the more a little darker gray coarsely um, coarse pumice with the larger vesicles the larger gas bubbles there another spot here where you can see some of the neat internal folding this little zone here is just folded over on itself um, really intricate um, and so the idea here is that this stuff is like yeah you know, like molasses just rolling over on itself um, just oozing out moving slowly if uh, a big obsidian silica rich lava flow was barreling down on you uh, I think you'd be fine I think you could escape this thing on your hands and knees these move so slowly uh, and I believe I read somewhere that they think I'm not sure where the data comes for this, but that the the length of time it took to extrude this lava was something like maybe a year or more. So this lava was being pumped out over a very long period of time versus if you think about Hawaiian or Icelandic eruptions of basalt, where we might erupt a comparable volume of lava in a very short period of time, maybe just a few weeks or even days. And so this thing would just be so sluggish. And during the day, it would just look like a pile of rocks probably. Um, at night, it would glow incandescent. You'd actually get to see that a little bit, a glow, kind of orangish red glow in the evening. So, but lots of detail here, lots of uh, different uh, types of rocks, even though it would appear to be mostly the same. There's just like anything else in this world, the closer you look at something, the more uh, complicated and nuanced it becomes. So we'll go ahead and wrap up here, but hopefully you enjoyed this wonderful little stop. If you're ever in Central Oregon, uh, near the town of Bend, uh, Newberry Volcanic National Monument has a lot of volcanic diversity and a lot of volcanic features to look at and explore. Here's a little section that looks like the more brecciated zone here. So here's chunks of obsidian in a more of a brecciated uh, kind of matrix there. So I think we've seen almost all the different layers there except that that rhyolite core and that might be difficult to tell apart from some of the light gray obsidian until you look at it really closely and are able to tell if it has uh, some of those some of those little tiny crystals in them or not so little view here uh, to the north a little bit smoky today so go ahead and sign off thanks for joining me again on this little excursion to the big obsidian flow please like share subscribe do all those good things that help promote uh, the things i'm trying to do with geology and education have a great day and if you uh, are willing to there's ways to donate there's the thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer there's the um, paypal link under the video description and then there's also a donate uh, button on the banner of the homepage. so thanks again for joining me from newberry volcano in central oregon the big obsidian flow